just know when they don't want you there. My family was the reason I existed, and I lost them all. If they ever choose to catch up before I die, I, I welcome them. Basically now, I'm teaching you the language of gay, <laughs> because it may not be a language that you're familiar with, all right? So it's pretty simple. My friends tease me, they tell me that I'm gay for pay, and it's absolutely true. <laughs> Many medical providers, um, really aside from sexual orientation, really just older adults being sexually active is, there's definitely a taboo in our society against it, and so I think um, practicing those questions is a really great way of doing it. We also know that sexuality among older adults is virtually invisible. I've been to several workshops where we talk nothing but the sexuality of older adults, the problems that they face in terms of healthcare, and all of those things. But what is probably generally, I would have to say, universal, is that there's always a, a slight level of uncomfortability with the topic. And so we know that that's absolutely true. We also know that those that is not the case, that there is a whole lot of sex going on out there. The first job I had was at McDonald's. I flipped hamburgers in the back. And I loved it. Um, and I got my first paycheck, and I got it, and I was so excited I was going to buy a swimsuit. That's back when I really seen public in a swimsuit. And a new pair of sneakers. And I saw that check, and I went, who is SS? Where did my money go? Well, no one had explained to me that Social Security and Medicare and all the things that come out of our check are something that we contribute to the greater good as we get older. The fundamental idea that I will present to you about the transgender community is that when they are born, their biology, their body, their anatomy does not fit with who they believe in their core to be who they're supposed to be. So you have to kind of pair that idea with the the belief, the, the absolute conviction that they are supposed to be living as the opposite gender. And that's kind of the basic idea to have in the back of your mind as we go through. 24% of people living with HIV and AIDS in the US are over the age of 50. But what is most remarkable is that that number has increased 17% seven, increased in four years. A whole generation of people who don't know who we are. That's really sad, because you're missing out on a lot. If we are saying come out and, and be filled with pride, it's our responsibility to make sure that continues right through their last day.